Welcome! Today we're going to go over 12 awesome gifts that you can get for the photographer in your life. Coming up. I've got a ton of gravel in my shoes. Girl on my shoulder, heart full of blues and in the dirt. Welcome back everybody. My name's Dave Grenier and this is Photo Heal. Healing through the art of photography. Let's get started. Thanksgiving is over and you know what that means, Christmas time. All right, let's be real. You're looking at this video for you, not for somebody else. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what you want. So let's help you figure out exactly what it is that might be the best decision for you. Now, in case you happen to miss that video on the Moment Lens Review last week, I love these lenses. These are one of my top things that I would recommend absolutely positively, unequivocally, if you're a mobile photographer, if you know someone who's a mobile photographer, even in the slightest. Now in that video, you're gonna find all the information that you need, so I'm not gonna go over it again, but I highly suggest checking it out because these are amazing. Shutter Magazine is an awesome photography magazine. It's the only one I really read. As a designer, I really appreciate this. The design is very sleek, very simple. The cover that they have on here is actually a velvety texture, which is really nice. It's one of those small things that you don't normally think about, but it doesn't feel like that high gloss that you usually get from a magazine. I always love the cover art. It's always just a photo, shutter magazine, and then it'll say what edition it is. The black and white edition, the creative edition, the branding edition, whatever it is. A good way to test this out to see if it's a magazine that you like or somebody else might like is get them at Barnes & Noble or some newsstand. Now it's worth noting that you can get the digital version for free if you register on their website. I think when I signed up for this, it cost me $50 for the year subscription. It's definitely been worth it. If this is a gift for somebody else and not for you, then absolutely get them a hard drive. Get them a hard drive. Get them a hard drive. I can't stress it enough. Hard drive space when you're a photographer and God forbid you do any sort of video is at a premium. I try to be really, really careful about how I fill up my storage. I make sure that I delete photos that I don't use. Of course, I, I know there's photos that I can get rid of, but I'm a photographer. So we always wanna save a lot of shots for maybe somewhere down the line, maybe 15 years. We can't get rid of those amazing shots, even if they're terrible shots, we can't get rid of them. So buy a hard drive. There's a few things to think about when you're trying to buy a hard drive. This is an external backup drive. You can just plug it into your computer, run the backup software, and then your computer will be completely backed up. Obviously, you need to get a larger hard drive than what is inside your computer. Hard drives are becoming more and more affordable, which makes it a lot easier for this to actually be a good option. So it's not just about the size of the hard drive, it's also about the speed of the hard drive. So if you get something that's called a solid state drive, SSD, it's gonna be very, very fast but it's also gonna be a lot more expensive. As far as backup drives go, if this is a gift, or even if it's for you, just getting a regular hard drive and getting more space works well, especially for me. They have all sorts of different drives. They have RAID devices, backup drives, rugged drive, solid state, regular state, all state. They don't have all state drives, I don't think. You wanna get somebody a hard drive, I'm gonna link it down below. This is just a terabyte drive. It really helps me out for backing things up especially because I do all these videos. Since we're talking about hard drives and storage, one of the best things you can get is a good SD card. This SD card that I'm holding is not my best one. It's the one that came with the camera. My best one is in the camera right now. There's a few things to note on SD cards. You're gonna have a class rating. You wanna make sure that you get class 10. Class 10 is the highest, class 10 is the best. Right there, you see the 32 gigabytes. The higher you can get, the better. This one doesn't show you what speed it is. The higher the speed that it writes with is gonna make the performance of the camera so much better. If you're in high speed shooting mode and you wanna take a picture of maybe birds flying away or a car driving by, whatever it is, if you don't have a card that's fast enough, then it's gonna buffer in your camera and it's gonna take maybe four or five shots and then it's not gonna let you take any more photos until it writes all the data on there. That might not seem like a big deal. Maybe you're at an air show and you miss out on amazing photos, like maybe I did. Then you'll learn your lesson and get the fastest card with as much storage as you can manage at class 10. This is a shutter release that allows you to control your camera remotely. This one is a Canon 
specifically designed for the model that I have. If this is a gift and you don't know what model camera it is, I wouldn't suggest getting just a generic one because a lot of times the functionality doesn't work right. It doesn't work as quickly as it should. This is the Canon BR-E1. It's amazing for the Canon T7i, which is what I'm shooting on right now. So a shutter release isn't just good for video. It's also good if you want to do time lapses and long exposures. They're just, these, these are awesome. My life has become exponentially easier since I got this. Photography is all about lighting. And this bag houses three indoor lighting softbox setups. They're very basic setups, but they're also not really expensive. You open this up, it's nothing really fancy. You get cardboard boxes. These are three different light bulbs. This is the part the bulb goes into. Now this one's the small one. It's the one I don't usually use because I have the two big ones right here. You can see that's with the light off. It gets really dark and then I just have that nice little fire. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Okay, I'm scared. So again, there's one light. There's the other light. You gotta let them warm up just a little bit. It has this adjuster, makes it longer. It's got the standard tripod. There's a little twist guy there. This here has a couple different adjustments to it. To go nice and straight, you lock that down. You take this guy out, twist it. Take this, put it down like that. It comes with multiple umbrella colors. I'm using the two white ones as a soft box. This one is the black one. As you can see, it's reflective in there. So this part just sticks right in there. And voila, you have yourself a light. They end up looking a little something like this. Very simple setup in here. The bag that I'm wearing right now is called the Sling Bag. This is my absolute favorite one. This is the one that I use for my whole YouTube setup. Now it comes with this strap that you can put across your chest here to keep this secure if you're hiking in the mountains or if you just don't want the thing bouncing around too much. If you want to unclip this and just wear it like a regular one-sided backpack, go for it. I actually find this more comfortable when I'm just bringing it from my house to the car and the car to wherever I'm shooting. Now, the reason why it's called a sling backpack is because you can sling it around, unzip it, and bam, there's your camera. As you can see, it has adjustable compartments. These Velcro will change just like the other bags. I have this waterproof cover in there. I also have this other stand that I can keep in there. Up here, you have another compartment. You can put all sorts of stuff. I put my battery and my extra lens caps in there. It has this other compartment up here, which you have different compartment here. This is where my microphone goes, the one that's on this camera right now. It also has on the side here, it has a little pouch here, this little holder, and then this little clip. This is where I put the Gorilla Pod that you see up in there, which we'll go over in a minute. Now, as you can see here, I'm wearing the standard backpack style. This is an awesome bag. I love this bag, especially if I have a lot of heavy stuff. Maybe you want to throw some snacks in there if I'm going to go for a nice trail. It also has this clip here that I can unclip and just have it kind of looser. Or if I am climbing high up and I just want to keep things nice and tight, you can keep those straps attached. It's like any backpack, you have to take it off entirely and maybe put it on the ground or hold it if I'm gonna unzip it. And maybe go in here like this and grab my extra battery or whatever it is. There's nothing wrong with that, but the sling bag just seems to be a lot easier for me. It's more accessible, it's quicker, it's nice. Now it's got all sorts of pouches in it. This little pouch, these elastic bins, another pouch in there have one on the side, maybe for your cell phone. Pouches in there, pouches galore. Then you have the main compartment. This is how I have it set up, but as always, you can take these and adjust them however you want. It comes with more of these guys, but that, that's all I need. Now this part is nice because this is a little cover. Let's say you're going into a waterfall. You shoot waterfalls, don't you? Or it's raining really heavy. Now this bag is already water resistant. This here is waterproof in here. I believe it's waterproof. Don't quote me on the waterproof. Don't quote me on the waterproof. But it also comes with this extra bag. So if you are going in said waterfall, you can just cover this up, put the hat on, and you're wonderful. Kind of looks like that with the little hood on. Yeah. And then on this side, it also has more straps. You can maybe put a tripod here. That's usually what I would do is I'd put my little travel tripod there. So this bag that I have on is just a standard satchel bag. I don't like this bag really, mostly because if you have a lot of heavy stuff, then it doesn't really hold on very nicely. Now, as you can see, I have this strap here. I also have this strap around my waist. 
and that helps it from, if I am walking up hills, it keeps it from doing one of these guys. Even with it nice and tight, I can never get it to the point where it's comfortable enough that it's not bouncing around. So that's why I don't like the satchel bag. One thing you're gonna learn about camera bags is we love straps. Photographers love straps on everything. Straps, straps, more straps, straps are good. You do have a couple compartments, just like always. You can adjust them if you have a different size camera or more lenses. I do like this part here. This is for your little SD cards. There's another zipper here, of course. It's got a pouch in here. Got another pouch here. You have a handle in case you want to hold it. And the strap that went around my chest before, you can take that off, so there is less to it. But again, you still have all this business. I'm not a huge fan of it. It does have these straps underneath again so you can carry a tripod or something. If you don't get anything else, a tripod is pretty much essential. Essential. Now one of the things that can change your game completely as a photographer is a good tripod. When I started to invest in my photography, I bought a tripod and I liked it so much I bought a second one. Now it's part of the Amazon Basics program, which means that it's not the highest caliber of quality, but it also means that it's not gonna be overly expensive. The Amazon Basics are really great items, especially if you're on a tight budget and you want to see if it's something that you want to invest in in the future. Everybody say hi to Chloe. She decided to join us today. Now it has this hook here in case you want to add weights to it, in case it's really windy and you don't want your tripod falling over. I don't know about you, but I don't want my camera falling over. Now a few things you should know. It has a round level here and it has a linear level here. Round level is just to make sure that the whole tripod itself is even. And then up here you have the linear level that you adjust by untightening this, bringing it up or down, centering it, and then you just twist it, tighten it back up again. This is the part that goes on the camera. Once you have it mounted, you can just take this lever and now that's locked in place. Now this guy here is if you want to make a portrait so you can turn your camera sideways at 90 degrees. It also has this handy handle. Handy handle? As you can see, this goes right up to about here on my chest. And then you add the camera height, it's going to be about here. Now if you want it to get up to your face, what you want to do is untwist this part here and just crank it up. This is as high as it goes. You want to make sure that you tighten this back up because if you don't, your camera, depending on how heavy it is, will probably sit on that and it'll stay where it is for a little while. And then you'll notice that it starts to notch down a little bit depending on how heavy your camera is. Excellent, excellent Amazon Basics. Like I said, I have two. One that I'm using currently as I'm recording and then this is my backup. Now, speaking of tripods, these next ones are an absolute must. This here is a gorilla pod. As you can see, it is attached to a tree branch. These are absolutely mandatory if you like to go out and take photos anywhere. That is not going anywhere. I'm really tugging on it. That's a heavy camera too. That's an old Sony Alpha A100. This thing is fully articulating. You can move this around. This is for the mobile phone photographers. Now this thing adjusts depending on how big the screen is. Again, you can see that it's wrapped around pretty darn good up in there. They can stand up however you want them. If you want to change the height on this a little bit, totally easy to do. You just bring that down and then you could even adjust this if you wanted to look down. Absolutely a must have for any photographer. Now it's important to note that every photographer has personal preference. So you might buy maybe the sling bag and the person that you're buying it for hates sling bags. Maybe they love the satchel bags. You just have to understand that everything is very personalized. And if they don't like it, it's not necessarily because it's a terrible idea. It's just that their personal preferences are different. Also something that you want to make sure that you consider is if the things are compatible with the devices that you're buying for these people. Now most everything on the list is compatible, but things like the shutter release and the cards aren't gonna be compatible with everything. Some people don't have a slot for SD cards. One of the reasons why I went with Amazon for the links is because they have a great return policy. So if it's the wrong size, the wrong style, the wrong color, whatever it is, usually they'll return it without any issues. Well, it's been fun. I hope you gained something from this video. If you don't mind, I'm gonna get back to my reading. Oh yeah, and don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you're into this kind of thing. And until next time, 
be good to each other. Goats. Let's go over there. Goats.